Hi friends, Jen here with Serenity Hill Farmstead. This is not our video today. Uh, today we are actually talking about wild lettuce. And I have a bunch of wild lettuce that we brought in and I'm gonna go ahead and make a tincture of this. And while I am doing that, I am going to tell you all about it. So if you can stand that this is here, I know it's probably distracting, but I don't have another place to put it. And this is the time that I have to work on this. So let me show you about wild lettuce first. I'm gonna cut off a piece so that I can bring it up close to the camera and you can take a look at it. So we harvested this about an hour ago, so it's starting to droop, which is still totally fine. But I wanna bring it up close. Here is wild lettuce, also known as prickly lettuce. And I've had this growing in my garden for years and I did not know that this was wild lettuce. I thought that this was something else because my little app told me so. Uh, and then I looked more into it because I'm like, you know, this just really looks like what I thought was wild lettuce. And sure enough, it is. And I triple checked this with my plant ID app and my Peterson book. And I had, I ran it by a friend and she's like, sure enough, that is wild lettuce, my friend. So we have wild lettuce. So I went ahead and harvested that. And I want to show you, here we go. This is how you can tell it is wild lettuce. Do you see these? You hear that? You see those spines on there? Yeah, those spines on there are kind of the telltale that you have yourself some wild lettuce. Um, wild lettuce is like the opioid of the herbal world. Um, it doesn't have that, it's not addictive. It, it doesn't have that crazy, like drug feeling like if you were to take a, a morphine pill or a dilaudid or something like that that you would get in the hospital it doesn't oh my goodness this is a thick stem um, it doesn't have that kind of effect but it does take your pain away it does help with that so i want to i'm very very eager to try this and there's a couple different things i'm going to try now i was watching uh, another herbalist uh, talk about this in her YouTube video, um, talking about all of the benefits of wild lettuce. And she just made me so excited to try it. So I figured, you know what? We're gonna give this a shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this up as best I can. Now, when I'm doing this, like any other medicine that we are trying to make, we are going to make sure we are checking out the leaves and the stems and anything that we're going to be including into our medicine uh, we're going to make sure everything is nice and healthy and i already checked these when i harvested them but i just want to yep see i missed that little piece just put that on the floor for now um so i want to make sure i got everything real good okay do you see that also can you see that how that milky substance is in there when you break it you can see that coming out um, when you work on it with it, it's kind of sticky. Uh, oh, it's getting stickier as I work with it. But that's the stuff that we're after. That is, that is the magical stuff, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this up. We wanna use this fresh because if you dehydrate it, it's gonna affect the, the stuff that we want, you know? So we wanna make sure that we use this one fresh. So I'm going to, put all of this wonderful stuff in this container and I'm gonna fill it up. I'm gonna fill up the entire thing and then I'm gonna go ahead and add, I don't like that one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add my vodka from there. And this, I'm gonna let this sit for a while. Like I want this pretty strong. So it's probably gonna sit for a good eight weeks to really pull everything out. So we've talked before about making tinctures with aerial parts. My dog's making noise here. Um, with the aerial parts of plants. If you are doing that, you know, generally I've talked about how you can let that sit for about four weeks and then you can strain it four, five, six weeks. I mean, the longer it sits in there, the more potent it gets. I mean, there's a limit to it, but that's a big one that we don't want. 
But with this one, I'm actually gonna let it sit for a week or two and let it macerate, so let it break down. And then I'm going to um, mash it up even more in there. And part of the idea that I saw this other herbalist do was take a stick blender and uh, really mash it up and get, I'm like, oh, that's a brilliant idea. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So as I'm getting the last little bit uh, cut up and broken up and put into my jar before we add our vodka, uh, I wanna talk about harvesting it. So um, like any wild herb, make sure you are like double or triple checking to make sure you've got the herb that you think you have. And when you are harvesting it, make sure that you are harvesting it from an area that is not near anything that is sprayed uh, with anything or near a roadway or a drainage ditch or anything like that. You want it in a field away from all of those contaminants, pollutants, and you want a nice, fresh, clean herb because remember, you're gonna be ingesting this. So what the herb takes in is going to be going into you. So we've just got this last stem like that piece. And then we're gonna add our vodka. And I am using a 40%, which is an 80 proof vodka. That's what I like to use. You will find different herbalists have different preferences, different suggestions. There's so many different kinds of herbalism, guys. There's folk herbalism, there's Western herbalism. There's so many, there's so many. So you will find that, uh, and we all have different experiences and different practices. So you'll find that most herbalists, everybody does things a little bit differently. Okay, so whoop, this one is almost empty. So we'll start with this one. So we're gonna go ahead and fill up our bottle. And I'm gonna let this sit probably for eight weeks. I think I like that. I think we will let this sit for eight weeks. But like I said, a couple weeks in, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna really mash this up in here. And that'll help that white milky substance. It'll help that mix more and pull more into the vodka. Cause that is what we're after. Now I did wide read up on wild lettuce because this is a newer herb for me. Uh, and it does affect everybody different. This is for pain uh, management and everybody with pain management is affected differently. So with some people, it could not uh, affect them much. Other people could be highly sensitive to it. So if you're gonna be taking this, you know, use your better judgment, definitely um, do your own research on whether or not this is something that you can use or any condition that you are trying to get help with, or if you have any other underlying medical conditions or you're on any other medications, you wanna make sure that this is something that you can take. Uh, some herbs do interact with other prescription medications or they do block absorption. So you wanna make sure that you are doing your own research for your own specific situation, your own specific medications that you're on. So we still have to label this. I'm just gonna write on the top. We've got our lid and our ring. I'm gonna tighten this up real good. I'm gonna go ahead and shake this up. Um, make sure all of these, you know, the air that's coming out in that see just like when you're canning make sure you get all the air <laughs> worked out and if you need to top it off again because when that air comes up the liquid drops we make sure we do that because you want all of the of the herb to be under the vodka and there we go so that is all there is to it guys when this is done we're going to come back and we're going to strain it and we'll talk more about wild lettuce and how we're going to use this uh, the other herbalist that i was watching do this is the honeystead and she's also a very knowledgeable herbalist and uh, does things very similar to the way that i do them and i really liked her idea of making a sap so I think we're also going to harvest some of this and infuse it into an olive oil. Now infusing into olive oil is super simple. It is 
literally the exact same process that we just did with this, except um, I'm going to probably do it the fast way and do it in the crock pot. So we're going to make this, and I'm probably gonna do a quart of it to try it out uh, because I know this will work better in vodka uh, as a tincture for me than it would in oil. So, but I wanna make something topical for arthritis pain. I get a lot of pain with my arthritis in my hip and my back, and I wanna give that a shot and see if that would work. So stay tuned for that. I will keep you up to date and let you know how that works. And if you guys like this content, you wanna see more of it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and we'll see you in the next video.